Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. And enjoy the shows. If you'd like for me to get you a shout out, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. Leave us a donation. We'll get it up here for you. Just tell us who you want it to. You, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, spouse, whatever. And we'll get it up here. Well, you cut out that humming. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was annoying you. Well, it is. Everything I do annoys you, doesn't it, Harry? As a matter of fact, it does. Well, I asked for it when I married you. Yeah, you did. Oh, but let's not quarrel, darling. I'm tired and upset enough as it is. Upset? What have you got to be upset about? I'm worried about you. Uh, I know somebody's looking for you, and I know it'll mean trouble if he finds you. Look. We moved here two weeks ago, and we haven't seen the guy you're talking about in the neighborhood. Yes, but... Uh, he doesn't know where I live now. But, darling, he might find out. Why oh, don't you no. tell me who he is? Not a chance. I'm going out for a while. Harry, don't. Don't be a dope. Harry, please, don't go out. Don't bother me. I'll see you in a couple of hours. Ah, fresh air. Uh, Hiya, Harry. Huh? I said hiya, Harry. Oh. Hiya, Joe. What are you doing up in this neighborhood? Just wandering around looking for you. You were? Yeah, the boys want me to give you something, Harry. Tell the boys no thanks. The boys sir. said give it to you, Harry, so here oh. it is. <laughs> It's smooth, 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 and you're sure it's pure. That, my friends, was the voice of a man, an enthusiastic friend of C.V., describing what he likes about champagne velvet, the beer with the million-dollar flavor. You, too, will find that C.V. is smooth from foam to finish. More than that, from your first sip of the rich, creamy foam that billows on top of your glass, Right down to that last delicious drop, you'll find C.V. bright and sparkling, light and lively, with a clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure and stamps it as a beer of real premium quality. Premium quality that costs you no premium in price. Yes, sir, it's smooth. Just as smooth and you're sure it's pure. There is no finer beer. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Oh, All right, Sergeant. Dig okay. those bullets I fired out of that mattress. Let's see if they match the ones we found in Harry Walker. Right. And I want to talk to our witness. I, right away, Inspector. We'll know in a minute if we have the murder gun. It's lucky we found it near the scene of the murder. It wasn't luck. It was good police work. Thank you, Inspector. Okay, now, Mr. Smythe. Oh, yes. Can't yes, you give yes. us a better description of the killer? Oh, well, I, 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 I had only a glimpse of him, Inspector. Only a glimpse of him. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's all. That, you that's say all. he was Dr. ugly, yes. uh, large, yes. immense. Yes. yes. Broad-shouldered. Yes. With a very crooked nose, uh, Very huh? crooked, Inspector Perry. Very crooked, yes. And that's the best you can do? Well, that's the best. The very best, yes. Okay, okay. Now, uh, thanks, Mike. What was he wearing? Well, Did you hear I his voice? He... Anything well, like that? Well, I, I, I heard the shout, that's all, that's all. Then, then, then this man ran by me, right, right by me. Right by I you. saw his face for a second, just but a just second. a second. That's how I happened to notice his nose. His crooked nose? Yes. Great. Yes. All I have to do is check every big guy in town with a busted nose. Well, I know... Inspector means... Faraday. Yes, Sergeant. The rifling marks on these bullets match the marks on the bullets we took out of Harry Walker. Well, that's very uh, interesting. Uh, please, Mr. Smythe. Uh, yes, yes, this is the murder gun, all right. Thanks, Sergeant. Now, check with firearms registration. Let's find out who owns this gun. Matthews is doing that now, Inspector. Oh, good. 
Uh, Maybe the owner of the gun will lead us to the killer. It might even be the killer, Inspector. Yeah, that would make a pretty simple case, wouldn't it? Uh, come in. Oh, Matthews, what about the ownership of the gun? We know now it is the murder gun. Well, then, that's all we do know, Inspector. The owner of the gun isn't our killer, I'll promise you that. Why not? It belongs to one of the city councilmen. He reported it stolen six weeks ago. Bullseye. 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 You can I put three out of three darts in the bullseye, Blackie, or can't I put three out of three darts in the bullseye? You certainly can. But may I make a suggestion, Mary? Mm -hmm. Now, instead of standing at the board and putting the darts in the bullseye, I go across the room and try throwing them in. Oh, no. That's the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Hello, Blackie. Well, Inspector Faraday. Yes, Inspector Faraday. Hello, Miss Wesley. Hello, Inspector. Inspecting anything um, particular today? Mm, if I was particular, I wouldn't be in Blackie's apartment. Mm hmm. I'm working on the murder of Henry uh, Harry Walker. Uh, he was killed a little over an hour ago. I want Blackie to help me. What? Mary, did you hear a familiar voice say a strange thing? Yes, Blackie, I did. Blackie, I want your help. There it is again. Oh, there must be an echo in here. Hmm, I haven't seen any lately, but I'll look. The echo is in one of your empty heads, Blackie. Are you going to help me? I, uh, well, it's still bouncing around in here, Mary. Uh, maybe we should open the window and let it out. A thing like that could be dangerous. Uh, look, Blackie, look, Miss Wesley, I'm serious. I need some information about the murdered Harry Walker, and Blackie can give it to me. What makes you think so? I checked into Walker's background. He's got a wife, but I haven't found her yet. She's disappeared. Oh, and you want me to track her down? No, but I found out Walker used to pal around with your old friend Shorty. Great. So I think you can tell me something about Walker. Faraday, I can't even tell you anything about Shorty. I haven't seen him or heard from him in over a year. Well, do you remember Walker at all? No, I never even met him. Fine. Sorry, Faraday. The one time you want me to help you, I can't. But I'll tell you what I will do. What? Give me the facts on the Walker killing, and I'll solve this case for you in a walk. <laughs> Come on, get that left up there, Billy. Get that left in front of your chin, unless you want to sleep on the canvas for the rest of the day. Come on, get it up there now. Keep it there. You keep that up all day, too, Delaney? Oh, well, hello, Inspector Faraday. Down to pick the winner for the fight Friday night. I'm down to pick up a little information. Oh, well, uh, hold it a minute, boys. Hold it. Take a rest. Well, my boys are all clean, Inspector. When they work for Jim Delaney, they have to be. You know that. Yeah, I know that, Delaney. I just thought you might know of a fighter... Oh, about, well, over six feet tall, very heavy, an easy 250, 300 pounds, and with a busted nose. Yeah? I knew a fighter like that, Inspector. What do you mean, knew him? Well, he quit the fight racket about eight years ago. His name was Carson. Killer Carson. A killer's what I'm looking for, Delaney. I'm looking for him in every gymnasium in town. When'd you last see Carson? Oh, three years ago. Maybe the man I'm looking for. Where'd you see him last? Well, the last place I saw Killer Carson... Was that his funeral? Oh, you're positively superb, Joe. You can make them little balls run around a pool table like you had them electronically controlled. Never mind what I do at the pool table, Percy. Have you found Harry's wife yet? You have to give me more time, Joe. You have me in the most delicate spot. That's tough. I can't go around with a yap full of inquiries about a dead man's spouse without getting into a little trouble myself. Look, I want Wilma Walker, see? Sure. I saw I... her in the window of her house right after I gave it to her husband a couple of hours ago. She saw me. I know she did. You don't know that for certain, Joe. It was dark when you gave it to her. You might not have been perceived at all. Look, I've brushed by some guy, but he was so scared he didn't know what was happening. But I still want Mrs. Walker found. Yeah, but... She ought to be easy to get a line on. And we're going to play finders keepers, Percy. You'll find her, and uh, I'll keep her quiet. <laughs> Sweetheart, how's my beautiful sister? Scared, Roger. Scared to death. They've huh? killed Harry. 
What? Murdered him right out in front of the house. What? About three hours ago, I've been trying to reach you, Sid. Well, well, I've been out. Just got back. Where are you now? Oh, in a phone booth in a drugstore. I, I got see. out of the house right away. I'm afraid they'll kill me, too. Smart girl. Do you know who killed him? No, not for sure. I didn't see anything. I just heard the shot. You did, huh? Roger, what'll I do? Well, you better not come here, because they, they may know I'm your brother. Come looking for you here. Oh, Roger. Get a paper, find out what apartment you can get, and move right out. Only let me know where you are. All right, Roger. I'll do that right now. Good. You'll hear from me. I hope. <laughs> Here's the clothing store for big men that we're looking for, Blackie. <laughs> and look what the sign says. <laughs> we fixed fat. Very cute, Mary. Oh, no. Well, I told Faraday after he described the killer to me that the man might have been a boxer mm. because of that crooked nose. But the inspector checked and no soap. Oh, it was a good try. Maybe the fact that he was so big will lead us to him, though. Well, fat men are hard to fit, aren't they, Blackie? Yes, but there are a few shops that cater to them, like this mm. one. Come on in. Yeah. If we miss here, we'll try the others. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a clerk over there. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? And are you sure you're in the right shop? Oh, I'm not looking for a suit. But I would like to try a few questions on you for size. Really? I'm Boston Blackie. Oh, yes. I thought I recognized you. And this must be Mary Wesley. It most certainly is. Hello. Hello. Uh, what can I do for you, Blackie? Help me find a killer. A killer? A killer who's tall, heavily built, and with an obviously broken nose. Oh. I'm playing a hunch that he might have bought his clothing here. But I do have a customer with a broken nose, Blackie. A large man, easily 250 or 280 pounds. Uh -huh. But I really can't imagine him a killer. That might be the fault of your imagination. What's the fellow's name? Uh, Bobolink. Uh, Joe Bobolink. But he hasn't been around in over a year. Uh, you don't know what he did for a living or anything like that, do you? Why, uh, yes. He was a mechanic, an auto mechanic. You might try to find the garage he's working in. I will. Maybe we can solve this case by that auto suggestion. Hey, Joe, what you trying to do under there? Knock that chassis out from under the car? I get the oil pan back in place somewhere, and I can't do it with a nudge of my little finger. Hand me a number three wrench, will you, Percy? Sure. There you are. Hey, you shouldn't have to throw it, you bum. Hey, don't use no indelicate language, Joe. No customer just came in the door. Well, go see what he wants. I'm staying under here till I get this carriage fixed. Sure. Something I can do for you, mister? Are you in charge here? Yeah, that's right. I'm Boston Blackie. I'm looking for an auto mechanic, uh, big and heavily built with a crooked nose. Gosh, you don't care what kind of a guy you look for, do you? He'll care if I find him. He's wanted for murder. Oh... And uh, you had the impression that it was done by a big guy with a crooked proboscis. That's right. Huh. Do you know of an auto mechanic who might answer to that description? Uh, no, Blackie, I don't. But if I run across one, I'll let you know. Thanks a lot. Likewise. So long. So long. Hey, Joe. Joe! Yes? Hey, Joe, come out from under that car. Did you hear what that guy wanted? No, what was it? It was Boston Blackie. Yeah. And he wanted Joe. Pull me out from under here, will you? Sure. Come on. Okay. All right. Thanks. Likewise. Looking for me for the walker killer, huh? Yeah, I got that connotation. Now, look, you're going to have to hide somewhere, but quick. We'll get somebody else to change the numbers on these heisted cars we got no, here. No, I ain't leaving yet. Why? I thought that wife of Harry saw me. Now I know it. You should have found her, like I told you, Percy. Well, I done the best I could. Yeah, I'll bet. Hey, I know where her brother lives. Her brother's no... Wait a minute. Her brother should know where she is. You got a possibility there, Joe. Come on, we're going to see that brother. And if he won't tell us where to find his sister, brother, what we'll do to him. Listen for just a few seconds to a man who knows good beer and who likes champagne velvet. The beer with the million-dollar flavor. Bright and sparkling. Yes, sir. Light and lively. Yes, sir. Clear and clean. Yes, sir. There is no finer beer. And that's a fact. Go where you will, pay what you will. No better beer than C.V. can be had at any price. No better beer than C.V. can be made at any cost. 
CV's famous formula provides for only the more costly premium quality materials. Then, CV's careful processing and controlled aging gives you a beer that you're sure is pure. CV's flavor will tell you all of that. You'll find it bright and sparkling from foam to finish, robust and full-flavored as a real honest-to-goodness beer should be. CV's flavor will tell you that you're enjoying a premium quality beer at no premium in price. You're sure it's pure, and it's just as smooth. Now, back to Boston Blackie. <laughs> Harry Walker is shot and killed. Police are able to learn nothing except that the murder gun was stolen and the killer, as described by chance witness, was tall, heavy, and had a broken nose. Boston Blackie learns that a man answering the description of the killer might be an auto mechanic named Joe Bobbling. Meanwhile, unknown to the police or Blackie, the killer is trying to find his victim's wife in order to murder her. As we return to our story, Blackie watches impatiently while Inspector Faraday goes through some papers just brought into his office. Look, Faraday, will you put those papers down and listen to me? I'm going to show you some clever police work, Blackie, uh, if you'll just be quiet a moment. Look, just listen to me for a minute. I you? listened to you when you said the killer might be a boxer. He wasn't. So? Then you said he was an auto mechanic. Between my men and you, every garage and repair shop in town has been investigated. What have we found? Well... Nothing so far. You can double it. So what we ought to look for now is the dead man's wife. I've searched for her ever since the killing. She's disappeared. Or maybe she's dead, too. Then you're thinking just what I'm thinking. Maybe she saw the killing. Why not? Walker was killed not 50 feet from his house. When we searched his place, there was no one in it. That's right. Well, here's what I'm looking for. You won't put down those reports, will you? No. Because I had a hunch there was something in here that might help us. And there is. What? This is a report on the theft of the murder gun. The one stolen from that city councilman. Well? Blackie, our killer might be an auto mechanic at that. What makes you think so? This report says the murder gun was stolen from the glove compartment of the councilman's car. Mm -hmm. My men checked. Here's a note saying the car had been at the Acme Ace Garage for repairs a month ago. The Acme Ace Garage was one of the places I visited, Friday. Mm -hmm. No one answering Bob Link's description works there or ever did, according to the character I talked to. No one, huh? But he could have been lying... So let's go back and see if our suspect is there now, lying low. All right, don't, don't hit me again. Hey, you kill him if you keep up the fusty cuts, Joe. Maybe he'll be more communicative now. Yeah. And open his yap. Had enough, Roger? Yes. Yes, don't hit me again. Now, where's your sister? Where can I find Harry Walker's wife? I told you a hundred times, I don't know. You're still getting answers in the negative, Joe. <sighs> I guess you gotta knock him around some more. No. No more, please. No more. All right, will you tell me where your sister is? Will you? No. No, huh? Well, then you get it again. Here, let me no. help you up. No. All right, up, up. There. <laughs> All right, you better talk now, Roger, while you can still talk. All right, I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell where you can find her. Doesn't seem to be anybody in the garage, Faraday. Well, there ought to be. These things don't close up in the middle of the day. Well, this one has. We've banged on the door for ten minutes. Well, let's open the door and have a look around inside. Why, Faraday, you don't mean break-in, do you? Why not? Why, you naughty boy. Come on, hurry up. My back's turned. Get to work on the lock. A lock like this isn't work, Faraday. It's a pleasure. There, open already. Lucky someday I'm going to make you show me how you do that to lock. Oh, no, Faraday. I have to keep something from you besides my distance. Come on, let's have that look around inside. Yeah, the place is empty, all right. Funny, it looks as though it was closed up right in the middle of work, too. Yes, this car here looks as if it was being worked on just a little while ago. Well, you want to find something here. What do you want it to be? Proof that Mr. Crooked Nose works here and stole that gun here. 
Well, this is a big garage, Faraday, and there are a lot of cars around just standing still. However, let you and I get moving. <laughs> you did a good thing, knocking Roger Atkins off right in his own dwelling. I couldn't lock him out somewhere and knock him off without being seen. Yeah, but why... Didn't matter where own... I killed him as long as he's dead. Oh. Uh, here's the garage. So where do we go from here? To see Walker's wife? Uh-huh. What you going to do? Well, now that we've got her address, I want to pick up a wrench or something good and heavy for you know what. Yeah, I got you. I threw my gun away after I killed Harry. Come on, let's go. Okay. Wait a minute. Huh? Don't get out of the car. Why not? Look, Percy, the door to the garage is open. We locked it when we left. Hey, you're right, Joe. I recollect locking them myself. Uh, maybe there are cops waiting in there. Maybe Boston Blackie's come back. Come on, we're getting out of here. Okay, what to? Straight to Walker's widow. Hey, but Joe, what are you going to kill her with? With no wrench or nothing with which to carry out the deed. Look, Percy. Hands. Faraday, I've searched this garage so long, I'll see wrenches and screwdrivers in my sleep tonight. Yeah, so will I, Blackie. You know, I wonder if we shouldn't have gone out to see who was in the car that stopped outside. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. But what we really should have done is close the door after we got in here. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably somebody wanting a car fix, that's all. Well, with the door open, why didn't whoever it was come in? Yeah. I'm beginning to think it was one of those mechanics. And he beat it when he noticed the garage wasn't still locked the way he left it. Could be. There's the phone. I'm going to answer it. No, no. Wait a minute, Faraday. Why? Let me answer it. I can sound more like a mechanic than you. What? This might be a way to find out if old Crooked Nose works here. Okay. Acme Ace Garage. Good afternoon. Hello. Is Inspector Faraday there? Who's this? Matthews at headquarters. Oh. Uh, just a minute, Sergeant. Okay. It's for you, Faraday. Thanks. It's Matthews calling from headquarters here. Hello? Hello, Inspector Faraday. Yeah? This is Matthews. I know, I know. What's the trouble? Can't you get along down there for five minutes without me? Oh, sure, Inspector, but you always want me to report to you when there's something new. All right. What is new? Well, there's been another murder. A man named Roger Atkins in a room on 10th Street. And Atkins is the brother of the missing wife of Harry Walker. <laughs> Hey, Joe. Yeah? I'm beginning to think that this dame's brother gives us a bum stare. Right. In other words, that Walker's wife is scrammed from these premises. How do you like that? And we trusted him. Oh, I think she still bunks here, Percy. Her clothes are lying around. I got an idea she'll be back soon. So we wait, no? So we wait, yes. You certain we got the right abode? And you're going to tarry to say hello when she gets here? Uh-huh. When she gets here, Percy, I'm going to say hello and goodbye at the same time. <laughs> Blackie? Yes, Mary? You told me that Mrs. Walker's brother was murdered and that Faraday went to his room. Well, what are you doing here in the house Mrs. Walker used to live in? We're trying to find some clues to where she is now. Something I should have done a long time ago. Well, that's why you talked to the neighbors, huh? Yes, and they didn't know where she'd gone. Well, you keep looking through the place. There's no furniture here, so I'm going to sit on the floor and read this newspaper. Okay, you... What? What newspaper? This one. I found it over in the corner. I'll just take a look at the ad. Oh, yeah, do that. Well, let's see. Blackie, Where could I... uh -huh. there's a piece cut out of this advertisement. Something cut right out of the center of it. Let me see that newspaper. Yeah, here. Here we are. Yeah. There's a piece cut out, all right, but it doesn't make sense. You should it? Why would anyone cut out the center of a department store ad? Unless... Unless what? Unless there was something on the other side of the page, which is what I'm going to find out in just three seconds. <laughs> Joe's the name, Joe Bobbley. What do you want? I got what I want. You. Oh, no. I had to wait a long time, too. So long my pal Percy got tired and went home. What are you going to do to me? 
kill you, lady. No, please. Kill you because you saw me kill your husband. But I didn't. I saw you in the window of your house just after I put those slugs in them, and you told the cops what I looked I like. I came to the window when I heard the shot, but I didn't see anything. That's what they all say, except to the cops. No, I'm... I'm fixing you so you can't say anything to anybody. No. Oh, uh, oh, 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 Nice going, Blackie. You got him with a poke in the jaw and a sock in the eye. Yeah. Yes, Faraday. He won't be able to see out of that eye for a while. But that he didn't look good anyhow. Joe Bobbling confessed and implicated his pal Percy Wayne, Mary. Oh? Wayne is the guy I talked to on my first visit to the Acme Ace Garage. Was Joe Bobblink a real mechanic, Blackie, or was that just a front? No, he was really a mechanic, Mary, dealing in stolen cars. Hmm. That was Harry Walker's racket, too, and Walker had welched on cutting Bobblink and Percy Wayne in on a big deal. That's why he was killed. And why was Wilma Walker's brother killed? To get him out of the way and keep him quiet after he was forced to tell where Walker's wife was hiding. Oh, I see. Well, why didn't she go to the police and tell them who killed her husband? She didn't know who killed him. But she knew she might be in danger, so she decided the best thing to do was to hide. Oh, I suppose that was best. That's right. How did you find her? Oh, it was easy, Mary. Naturally. You know the newspaper you found, the one with the ad cut out. Certainly. You turned the page and practically flew out the door, but I still don't know why. I'll tell you why. On the other side of that page was a list of apartments for rent. I went over to the newspaper office, found a duplicate of the page, and saw the addresses of the apartments Mrs. Walker had cut out of the paper. And tried the three or four until you found the right one. Exactly. <laughs> Gosh, you're clever, Blackie. <laughs> of course, didn't you know? I'm not saying. What I will say is that it's lucky you got to Mrs. Walker's new place when you did, or finding her address wouldn't have done you any good. Faraday and I got there before Mrs. Walker came home, as a matter of fact, Mary. Mm -hmm. We went up the fire escape and saw a bobbling sitting in the room. When we saw his crooked nose, we just waited for her to come home to see what we'd hear. Well, you've certainly taken care of Joe Bobolink, the auto mechanic, haven't you? Yes, Mary. He fixed cars, but Faraday and I fixed his wagon. If you want a beer with flavor, a flavor that's delightfully different, Try the million-dollar flavor of champagne velvet beer. It's just as smooth. Now, there's a suggestion for the person who has yet to try champagne velvet. You'll find CV to be the smoothest, most mellow beer you ever tasted. More than that, you'll like its brightness, its sparkle, and the clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure. In addition, you'll enjoy the rich, robust and full-bodied flavor that proves CV's premium quality. Premium quality that is yours to enjoy at no premium in price. That's why our enthusiastic friend says, Try it. Just try CV and you'll agree there is no finer beer. You're sure it's pure. And it's just as smooth. Just as smooth. And now, here's a glimpse of what happens in next week's Boston Blackie Adventure. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. 
Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows.